Okay, now we're going to go into the shifting and the derailleur setup. We've already talked about what those are. This particular bike has a grip shift. It has seven gears on the right, which correlate to the rear gear cluster or the freewheel. We have three gears on the left, which are the three front chain rings. So what we're going to be able to do is we're just going to check to see how well this bike is built out of the box. By pedaling this bike, I can bring the shifter. As I tighten the shifter, it'll bring it up into the larger rings. And if you see, I have full range of motion on the front shifter. What I'm looking for is to see if the chain is dropping off on either side, all the way on the outside or all the way on the inside. And I'm not getting any of that. I want to make sure that the derailleur is straight with the chain ring, which it is. So at this point, I'm going to take our box wrench and I'm just going to tighten up the pinch bolt. I'll stop that wheel. I'm just going to tighten up the pinch bolt with the correct size. I'm going to tighten up the pinch bolt on the other side here as well. Just to make sure that that is all snug and in place. I can now move my attention to the rear gears and I'm just going to check the same thing. I'm going to see how it cycles. I clicked it one time, clicked it two, three, four, five, six times. Puts me up into that top gear. I can drop it all the way down. And I have full range of motion here. We'll go in a little bit finer detail about how to adjust the limits all the way on the outside and all the way on the inside. And that's what these set screws are here for. They're really just limit screws. And then we'll also go into more elaborate talk about what the cable tension will do to fine tune this. But at quick inspection, this bike is actually shifting quite cleanly and should be ready to go onto the sales floor. All I'm going to do again here is just tighten up that pinch bolt using the box wrench again. That way the cable is snug on the rear, on the front, everything is in place. We've already talked about most of the bicycle here, so we should be good to go except for fine-tuning this rear wheel, which we'll talk about in another segment. Okay, now we're going to talk about the wheel truing. And as we talked about on this bike before, this bike is pretty straight as far as the wheel goes, but there is a little bit of side-to-side -side motion. Now there's one difference that we want to point out. As we spin this, you may actually be looking at the tire, which we don't want to do. So if we spin this, the tire is made out of rubber, and because of that, it won't be perfectly straight. We can't judge it by the way the tire looks. We have to judge it by the rim on the brake pads. So right where my finger is is what we're focusing on. We don't really care what the wheel or the tire itself looks like. We care what the wheel is doing. So I'm going to focus on that now is as I spin the wheel, I can see that motion. And if I move my brake pad, I can actually use that as a stop. And you can see there's one particular spot that comes close and it actually hits the brake pad when I come close here. So if I stop at this point, we're going to shoot the camera to the side here so you can see what's happening. Here is the spot and we have spokes that go to both the one side and the other. And we're always going to work in sets of three when it comes to a wheel true. So we're going to deal with left and right side. At this particular spot, the rim was this way. So what I need to do is I need to loosen this side of the wheel and tighten the other side. The wheel true is a perpetual give and take of the two sides, so we want to make sure we work together. Again, if, if the wheel is really bad, we want to stop and probably consider replacing the wheel, providing a warranty ticket or a replacement ticket or a repair ticket. So this is just for fine-tune adjustments. So at this particular point right here, to be able to get the wheel or the rim that way, I'm going to loosen this particular spoke, which was in the center, and I'm going to tighten the other two spokes. Now this is going to take some getting used to as far as what is actually tightening and what is loosening, but you got to think about the spoke nipple is the end of the spoke head. That's actually the threaded part. So in this particular one, I loosened this spoke and tightened these two, allowing the wheel to go over to the other side away from the brake pad. We'll again go a little bit more depth later on, but this gives you the great overview on a quick way to be able to make a fast change to get it on the floor. The key is go slow. Make sure you take your time. You can always adjust it more instead of making big changes. Work in sets of three and nice small changes and you'll be able to get a nice straight wheel.